Hey everyone, this is like a brief, um, it's called a, what says here, a bio biographical, uh, sketch of, um, uh, Michel Pablo or Michel Reptice. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his, uh, that last part right, but, uh, I'm reading this because, um, well, it's, uh, Pablo is a very important person in the history of um, international Trotskyism, and uh, I'd like to know more just about uh, his uh, biography and who he was. I mean, uh, he's a very he's a very controversial figure, and some people, I'm sure, you know more than myself, will debate the contents of this, but maybe they won't. Um, it says this is from Marxist.org. It's by. Um, Wolfgang and Petra Lubitz, and it was written in 2004. Um, I'm not exactly sure, um, but I was looking for the one uh, biographical sketch that I was looking for was by Kyle Richardson, but I couldn't find it. Um, anyway, here we go. A lifelong revolutionary, Michel Pablo, for someone and a half decades was the chief leader of the Trotskyist Fourth International, or at least of its majority faction. Pablo was perhaps one of the most renowned and at the same time one of the most controversial figures of the international Trotskyist movement for all those claiming for themselves the label of, quote, orthodox, end quote, Trotskyism. Pablo, since 1953, was a whipping boy and the very synonym for centrism, revisionism, opportunism, and even for liquidationism. Um, that's like the beginning thing. Um, Michel Pablo is one and undoubtedly the best known of more than about a dozen pseudonyms used by a man who was born uh, Michel, uh, or Michel Raptice, son of Nicolaus Raptice, a Greek civil engineer in Alexandria, Egypt, on August 24th, 1911. Pablo grew up and attended Greek schools in Egypt from 1918 to in Crete. Before, at the age of 17, he moved to Athens enrolling at the Polytechnic, where he studied engineering. He was married to Eli Diovuniotis. In Athens, young Pablo in 1928 joined the ranks of the so-called Archaeo Marxists, named after their organ, Archaeon Marxismal. I don't know. An organization of dissident left communists which had split from the Greek Communist Party as early as in 1922. Within this organization, Pablo organized a Trotskyist faction which in 1929 split from the Archaeos, and in 1934 joined forces with another Trotskyist group under the leadership of Pentelis Puliopoulos, forming the Organosi Communistan Dietnistan Aladas, Organization of Communist Internationalists of Greece. During the 1930s in Greece, wait, hold on, I think there's a footnote here. Um, it says that Pantelis Puliopoulos was an outstanding Greek Marxist and Trotskyist who was shot by the Italian fascists during World War II. During the 1930s in Greece, Pablo was deeply involved in the factional struggle splits and reunifications of the Greek followers of Leon Trotsky. When a reactionary military dictatorship under General Metaxas was established in Greece, Pablo, together with his wife and many other Greek Trotskyists, were arrested and sent to a prison island. 
At the end of 1937, Pablo is released but expatriated and forced to leave the country. Footnote. Pablo spent several decades abroad in France, the Netherlands, Algeria, Chile, and elsewhere. In 1946, Pablo secretly visited Greece, participating in the reunification of the Greek section of the Fourth International. His next stay in Greece was in 1967, just a few days before the military junta under Papadopoulos gained power. During the years of the military dictatorship, Pablo assisted Greek underground resistance groups in many ways. He only returned more or less definitively to Greece after the fall of the junta in 1974. End footnote. Pablo went to Switzerland in 1937 and then to Paris in 1938, where Pablo continued both his studies and his political activities in the ranks of the Trotskyist movement. In, in September 1938, under the party name Speros, and not formally mandated by the Greek Trotskyist, Pablo, together with other delegates, with another delegate of the strong Greek section, G. Vitsoris, took part in the founding conference of the Fourth International, which took place clandestinely in Perigne, near Paris. Or Perigny. P-E with an accent, R-I-G-N-Y, near Paris. Pablo remained in France when World War II began. For a long time, Pablo was hospitalized in a sanatorium before he could return to Paris, where he organized Trotskyist illegal propaganda and was involved in the reconstruction and reunification of the French Trotskyist movement, which under the German fascist occupation had lost many of its militants and cadres. Together with a tiny group of other surviving Trotskyists, Pablo was able to consolidate the underground provisional European Secretariat of the Fourth International in 1943-44, after the violent death of its main leader and inspirer, Marcel Hique. Oh, you son of a gun. Oh. Pablo was successfully involved in the fusion of three French Trotskyist underground parties into one single party some months before the war in France came to an end. It says that uh, Marcel Hic was a uh, French Trotskyist. Uh, and he died in 1844, that's all it says here. Pablo, where am I? As European Secretary, Pablo soon could, soon could enjoy the endorsement by the American Socialist Workers' Party, then the wealthiest and most influential section of the Fourth International, and of other sections of the Fourth International immediately after the war. Pablo began to play an eminent role in the Fourth International, the headquarters of which was shifted back from New York to Europe after the war. Participation in the first post-war international conference of the Fourth International and its Second World Congress in 1948, Pablo, from 1948 to 1960, functioned as Secretary of the Fourth International, international Secretariat, which he energetically helped to recreate to give it a structure and a solid leadership during the very difficult years following the war. Um, the reason it says International Secretariat is that there was a split um, in international Trotskyism um, uh, by people who were against Pablo's leadership. Um, and um, uh, they were under the, um, I believe they were under the title of the International Committee. And there was a I think there's a partial reunification in like 1963 or something. So there's like a 10 year where uh, 
the period where the um, international Trotskyism was relatively divided. Pablo very early stressed the importance of the rupture between Tito and Stalin in 1948, the meaning of the Korean War 1950-53, to the possible implications of Stalin's death 1953 with regard to Eastern Europe and the international communist movement, and not least the new rise of the anti-colonial revolution since 1954. I think Pablo becomes works for Ben Bella's Algeria in some capacity. Eventually, I'm not sure. However, the rigid, quote, democratic centralist, end quote, regime and the highly factional organizational methods, including, e.g., the expellation of the majority faction of the then French section and other direct interventions into the internal organizational and ideological matters of single sections of the Fourth International, practiced by the International Secretariat of the Fourth International under Pablo's leadership also provoked some irritation and loss of some qualified cadres. It looks like I missed a footnote. Not exactly sure where this footnote was. Um, but I'll just read it. It says, uh, This is not the place to deal with the whole body of ideas developed by Pablo between 1948 and 1953. To sum up only some of the issues at stake in the so-called Pabloite split of 1953. Pablo's theory of, quote, deformed workers states, end quote, with regard to the Eastern European countries under Soviet, the Soviet Union's influence. Pablo's pessimistic outlook, assuming that bureaucratically deformed worker states would be a very long-lasting phenomenon. Pablo's contention that the Stalinist bureaucracies have a, quote, dual nature, end quote, in part reactionary and in part progressive. Pablo's assumption that the Stalinist communist parties could be pressured by a mass movement into revolutionary action and or detach themselves from the Kremlin yoke. Pablo's new tactic of, quote, deep entrism, end quote, or entrism sui generis, long-term entrism. Pablo's assumption of an imminent third world war being a war between two camps. Pablo's factually new evaluation of the role of the proletariat in the industrialized Western countries. Okay, so the, that's what end footnote. This complied with the combined with the growing opposition towards some of the theoretical. No, there it is. I didn't miss it. I haven't seen it yet. No wonder. It's a very small uh, marking. This combined with the growing opposition towards some of the theoretical and programmatic theses developed by Pablo at the beginning of the 1950s made Pablo a key figure in the 1953 split of the Fourth International. The most far-reaching, and tragic split. Of the, his, of the international Trotskyist movement. Under the banner of the struggle for Trotskyist, quote, orthodoxy, end quote, against, quote, Pabloite revisionism, end quote, the influential American Trotskyist party, the Socialist Workers' Party, SWP, under the Socialist Workers' Party's leader, James P. Cannon, the majority of British and French sections under Jerry Healy, Pierre Lambert, and Monsieur Marcel Bleib through, as well as a number of Latin American sections and some tiny groups in Europe, left the International Secretariat of the Fourth International, ISFI, setting up a rival international, Fourth International called International Committee of the Fourth International, of which Jerry Healy became secretary and from which the Americans should soon partially retreat, looking for possibilities of reconciliation with the inter. Uh, the International Secretariat of the Fourth International, a partial reunification in which, however, the followers of Healy and Lambert did not participate 
could achieve could be achieved only in 1963. Um, let me look at some of these people. Um, I'm familiar with some of these names, but I don't really know. Like they're not like sticking in my mind. I feel like. Okay. There's a uh, Marcel Bibb True, lived from 1918 to December 25th, uh, 2001, the French Trotskyist activist and theorist. Um, no. Uh, it does it doesn't say much more than that. Um, um, it says Pierre Lambert was a French Trotskyist leader for many years, acted as the central leader of the French Courant Communiste Internationaliste. CCI, which founded the Parte des Travailleurs. Um, it says uh, in the PCI, Lambert was known as a specialist in trade union matters. When Michel Pabo, the secretary of the Fourth International, raised the question of entrism sui generis, he eventually came to oppose this and helped to challenge Pablo within the French section of the Fourth International, backing the Parti Communiste Internationaliste leadership around Marcel Bledru, also known as Pierre Favre. All right. Back to the text. In the wake of the 1953 split, sorry. In the wake of the 1953 split, Pablo became, quote, demonized, end quote, a red rag and a sort of scapegoat for almost all negative developments and defeats of world Trotskyism. Footnote. Just as Stalin's, quote, cult of personality, end quote, as created by N.S. Khrushchev in 1956, was used by the Moscow-oriented communists of the 1950s to, quote, explain, end quote, almost all problems and shortcomings of, quote, real existing socialism, end quote. End footnote. Pablo was considered by many Trotskyists outside of the International Secretariat of the Fourth International as a grave digger of the Fourth International, aiming at the Fourth International's liquidation. Quote, Pabloism, end quote, became an invective absolute among Trotskyists. Quote, Pabloism, end quote, and quote, anti-Pabloism, end quote, since then have been constantly used as catchphrases in most of the controversies and splits occurring anywhere in the world of Trotskyism. Footnote. Even during the past two decades, there was a considerable number of pamphlets and articles about, quote, Pabloism, end quote, issued by some of the Trotskyist groups and sects. To list all, quote, anti-Pabloite, end quote, tracts, bulletins, and articles published since 1953 would make necessary a bibliography of its own. End footnote. As a matter of fact, neither the adherents and supporters of Pablo, who, by the way, never used the labels, quote, Pabloism or, quote, Pabloist or, quote, Pabloite, nor his adversaries could, 
With a few exceptions only, gained considerable numbers of new recruits or win substantial political influence during the years of the Cold War. Regardless whether they practiced entryist politics a la Pablo, or whether they tried to build an independent build up independent parties. On the contrary, a considerable number of Trotskyist groups and parties, both in the quote in, in the po, in the quote Pabloite end quote, and in the quote anti Pabloite end quote camp, became more and more marginalized, some of them degenerating to tiny sects with a strong proneness to split again and again. It was only in the 1960s, particularly around 1968, that Trotskyists in various countries could again, excuse me, could gain or regain some influence on the left in various countries of the world. After the 1953 split, Pablo remained the central leader and chief theoretician, cited among others by Ernest Mandel, Pierre Franck, Livio Metan, of the International Secretariat of the Fourth International. I'm going to assume you know who Ernest Mandel is, but I'm going to look up Pierre Frank and Livio Maitan. This bio is too big. Um, this is just as Pierre Franck was a French Trotskyist leader. He served on the Secretary of the Fourth International from 1948 to 1979. Um, Livio Metan lived from. 1923 to 2004 was an Italian Trotskyist and leader of the Associazione Bandiera Rosa and of the Fourth International. He was born in Venice. Uh, Pablo continued his organizational work from the Paris or Amsterdam headquarters and contributed to innumerable contributed innumerable articles, among them about the history of the Fourth International and about women's liberation to internal bulletins as well as the Trotskyist journals, which, despite, quote, deep entrism, end quote, not at all, quote, vanished, end quote. In the second half of the 1950s and at the beginning of the 1960s, Pablo was convinced that the revolutionary movement could rather make gains in what later was called the Third World than in the economically advanced countries, i.e. Pablo's thought and activities focused on the anti-colonial revolutions and anti-imperialist national liberation struggles unfolding in various parts of Africa and Asia, e.g. Algeria and Vietnam, as well as in Cuba. Pablo's involvement was not only a theoretical involvement, but he was enthusiastically engaged in solidarity work and eventually got deeply involved in the support of the Algerian liberation struggle against France, for example, by smuggling counterfeit money and weapons and preparing false papers. In 1960, Pablo was arrested in the Netherlands and given a 15-month sentence together with a Dutch member of the Fourth International, Sal Santen. Released from prison in 1961, Pablo soon went to Mexico, to me, to Morocco, continuing his support for the Algerian Revolution, e.g., by organizing illegal print houses and gun factories near the borderline. After the victory of the Algerian FNL, Front National de Liberation, National Liberation Front, under its leader Ahmed Ben Bella, Pablo from 1962. To 1965, when Ben Bella's regime was overthrown by Huari Boumedien, Huari Boumedien's 
uh, military coup, served in Ben Bella's government as an advisor in the economic reconstruction of the new independent state and became personal friend of Ben Bella. Um, there's a footnote I missed. It says, even during the past two decades, there was a considerable... Oh, no. I actually I did read that. Never mind. Uh, there were some um, references um, that I meant to say. Um, it says, the Fourth International... This is from the Fourth International Wikipedia page, so... Uh, the Fourth International suffered a major split in 1940 and an even more significant schism in 1953. A partial reunification of the schismatic factions occurred in 1963, but the never, but the organization never recovered sufficiently, and it failed to reemerge as a single transnational grouping. The response of Trotskyists to such a situation has been in the form of forming multiple internationals across the world with some divided over which particular organization represents the true legacy and political continuity of the historical Fourth International. And that's one. Uh, Salomon Senten, or Sal Senten, was a Dutch writer and Trotskyist who became a member of the Fourth International in 1938. Sassen Ten grew up in Amsterdam, especially in the newly built neighborhood Tuendorp Ustzan, in a Jewish working class family that tried hard to assimilate, but with varying degrees of success. In his book, You Are Jewish People, he talks about his youth and how his entire family was murdered in the Holocaust. Sal Santan himself survived the war through his mixed marriage with Bep Blau, stepdaughter of the revolutionary socialist Hank Snevliet, about whom he wrote the book Snevliet, Rebel. After the war, Sal Santan became a professional Trotskyist revolutionary and worked for the Fourth International. In 1960, Sal Santan was jailed for 15 months for trying to help the Algerian resistance movement with counter French, counterfeit French francs. In 1967, disappointed, he broke with his political, quote, friends, end quote. He wrote about this adios compañeros. After this, Al Sal Santin devoted himself to being a writer. In 2017, the municipality of Amsterdam named a bridge in the Meteor Enweg over the Komatenzingel in Tuendorp Ustzan after him. And then um, Ahmed Ben Bella was an Algerian politician, soldier, and socialist revolutionary who served as the head of government of Algeria from the 27th of September 1962 to the 15th of September 1963, and then the first president of Algeria from September 1963 to June 1965. Ben Bella played an important role during the Algerian War of Independence against France, leading the FLN, organizing the shipment of foreign weapons and coordinating political strategy from Cairo. Despite not being present in Algeria, French authorities tried to assassinate Ben Bella multiple times. Once Algeria gained independence in 1962, Ben Bella's Ujda group seized power from Ben Youssef Bank Heda's provisional government after a short crisis, and Ben Bella became Prime Minister of Algeria with Ferhat Abbas as acting president. Ben Bella succeeded. Ferhat Abbas on the 15th of September 1963 after rapidly sidelining him and was elected president after winning an election with 99.6% of the votes. Ben Bella pursued Arab socialist and pan-Arabist policies and came to describe himself as a Nasserist. Ben Bella nationalized several industries and established good relations with other anti-Zionist Arab states and left-wing states such as Gamal Abdel Nasser's Egypt and Fidel Castro's Cuba. 
Ben Bella encountered political conflict during his presidency as faced with border clashes in the Sand War with Morocco in 1963 and a failed re rebellion by the Socialist Forces Front against his regime in 1963-64. to Ben Bella was ousted from power and put under house arrest after a coup d'etat by his Minister of Defense, Houari Boumedienne, in 1965. Ben Bella was freed from house arrest in 1980 and died in 2012. It says, uh, the Wikipedia says, Huari Bu Medien lived from 1932 to 1978, was an Algerian military officer and politician who served as chairman of the Revolutionary Council of Algeria from the 19th of June 1965 until the 12th of December 1976, and thereafter as the second president of Algeria until his death in 1978. Born in Guelma, Boumedien was educated at the Islamic Institute in Constantine. Boumedien joined the National Liberation Front in 1955 and adopted the nom de guerre Huari Boumedien. He received the rank of colonel and in 1960 became the commander of the military wing of the FLM. President Ahmed Ben Bella appointed Boumedien, Minister of Defense in 1961. He did not agree with Ben Bella's reforms and later overthrew him in a bloodless coup in June 1965 and put him under house arrest. He abolished the Constitution and the Parliament and he himself was the chairman of the 27-member Revolutionary Council, the new institution that governed the state. The members of the council were mostly from the army. Initially, Boumedien did not have much influence, but after a group of military officers attempted a coup and tried to overthrow him in 1967, Boumedien consolidated his power. <coughs> the oil industry was nationalized in 1971. From the 1970s, a gradual restoration of parliamentar parliamentarism and in civil institutions in Algeria was initiated. The process ended with the adoption of the new constitution in 1976. The position of president was reinstated and Boumedien took over after winning an election with 99.46% of the votes. Boumedien pursued Arab socialist and pan-Arabist policies. He was strongly opposed to Israel and offered logistic assistance to anti-colonial movements and freedom fighters across the Arab world and Africa. From the beginning of 1978, Boumedien appeared less and less in public. He died in Dece on December 27, 1978 after unsuccessful treatment for a rare form of blood cancer, Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. Boudemien's funeral was attended by two million mourners. He was succeeded as president by Chadi Ben Dejid. Excuse me. Chadi Chadli Ben Jadid. Um, back to the text. Within the International Secretariat of the Fourth International, however, Pablo's power and influence had diminished since the late 1950s, and particularly during the time of his arrest in the Netherlands. Thus, Pablo was, a factually, was factually substituted as an ideological leader by Ernest Mandel, Livio Metan, and Pierre Franck. The majority of the International Secretariat of the Fourth International did no longer share some of his views, e.g. his evaluation of the Sino-Soviet schism of 1960 to 1962. Pablo, on the other hand, did not endorse the politics aiming at a reunification of the world Trotskyist movement as strongly advocated by Ernest Mandel and other leaders of the Inst International Secretariat of the Fourth International, on the one hand, 
and by Joseph Hansen and other leading figures of the American Socialist Workers' Party on the other hand, Pablo was factually regarded by them as a barrier for reunification. When it eventually came to the reunification in 1963, Pablo was almost marginalized and did no longer play any decisive role within the newly formed United Secretariat of the Fourth International. In 1964, it came to the final break between Pablo and the United Secretariat of the Fourth International Majority after Pablo had begun publishing his factional views in his own paper, Sous les Depuis du Socialisme, under the banner of socialism, issued in the name of a fictitious Commission Africaine de la Fourth Internationale, I don't know how to say fourth in French, um, African Commission of the Fourth International. Excluded from the United Secretariat of the Fourth International, Pablo, with some supporters, launched a small international organization called the Tendance Marxiste Revolutionnaire de la um, Fourth International, Revolutionary Marxist Tendency of the Fourth International, RMT, which later was renamed Tendency Marxiste Revolutionnaire International, TMRI, International Revolutionary Marxist Tendency, IRMT, later once again renamed Association Marxiste Revolutionnaire Internationale, AMRI, International Revolutionary Marxist Association, which was chiefly based in France and existed to the 1990s. After Pablo's exclusion from the ranks of the U United Secretariat Fourth International, articles from Pablo's pen were only sporadically published in some Trotskyist papers. Footnote. Although no longer associated with the United Secretariat of the Fourth International, Pablo always retained some contacts with leading Trotskyists in various parts of the world. It seems that in the first half of the 1990s, short before both men's deaths in 1995 and 1996 respectively, there was a reapproachment between Pablo and the longtime leader of the United Secretariat of the Fourth International, Ernest Mandel. Quote, a few years ago, he wanted to rejoin the International, the historical importance of which he never disputed. We came to an agreement, but for various reasons, including the situation of the revolutionary movement in Greece and important differences of opinion on the approach one should take to the war in former Yugoslavia, the agreement was not applied in, this, in his personal case, end quote. That's from uh, Livio Metan. Um, uh, Michel Raptiste, Pablo, 1911 to 1996, in International Viewpoint. This statement is in contrast to others according to which Pablo and his followers were readmitted by the United Secretariat of the Fourth International despite protests from the Greek section. Um, blah, blah, blah. Pablo never again gained considerable organizational influence, but rather continued to publish pamphlets and launch papers chiefly focused on the cause of autogestion, worker self-management, as, for example, Autogestion Paris, which he founded together with Lucien Goldman and Daniel Guerin. That's interesting. If you don't know who uh, um, Daniel Guerin is... Um, Daniel Goleen was a libertarian communist, um, and I have some uh, pieces of his on the channel, and I have a piece by Lucien Goldman, or Goldman. Um, um, in the 1960s and 1970s, Pablo traveled several countries in Europe and in the Third World, sporadically giving advice to various political leaders, for example, to Fidel Castro, Che Guevara, Otello de Carvalho, 
he had pers he held personal relationships with Salvador Allende, Josip Broz Tito, Muammar al Gaddafi, Ayatollah Khomeini, when living in French exile, with some PLO Palestinian Liberation Organization leaders, and sometimes Pablo was successful in organizing the escape of political prisoners. After his return to Greece, Pablo played a certain role in the founding of PASOK, the Pan-Hellenic Socialist Party, being close to its charismatic leader, the Greek Prime Minister, Andreas Papandreou. In 1977, Pablo founded the political association Protagoras, and despite his age, he continued to participate in many solidarity movements and committees, to comment on world politics in Greek papers, and to enjoy a certain impact on the Greek left. In the 1990s, however, Pablo endorsed the strong nationalist course of the PASOK and backed the Serb nationalists as, quote, friends of Greece, end quote. It was said that Pablo even undertook to bring together pan-Serb nationalist leader Karadzic, or Karadzic, with PASOK leader Papindru. Um, I'll read some of these things. Um, so, Otelo Saivo, sorry, Otelo Saiva de Carvalho, who lived from 1936 to July 2021, was a Portuguese military officer who had who was the chief strategist of the 1974 Carnation Revolution and who became a terrorist leader. After the revolution, Otelo assumed leadership roles in the first Portuguese provisional governments alongside Vasco Goncalves and Francisco da Costa Gomes, and as the head of the military defense force, Copcom. In 1976, Otelo ran in the first Portuguese presidential election, in which he placed second with the base of his support coming from the far left. Otelo was tried and sentenced for being a leading member of the terrorist group Forcas Populares 25th de Abril, which killed 19 people in several terrorist attacks. In 1996, the Portuguese parliament voted to pardon him and several others who had been sentenced for FP25 activities. The pardons were promoted by President Mario Soares as a gesture of democratic reconciliation. So that's one of uh, Pablo's friends. Um, just as Andreas Papandreou was a Greek economist politician and dominant figure in Greek politics known as founding the political party PASOK, PSOK, which had led which he led from 1974 to 1996. Papin served three terms as the third and eighth prime minister of Greece. Papandreou's party win in the 1981 election was a milestone in the political history of Greece since it was the first time that the elected government had a predominantly socialist political program. The achievements of Papandreou's first two governments included the official recognition of the leftist and communist resistance groups of the Greek resistance, the EAM slash ELAS, against the Axis powers occupation, the establishment of the National Health System and the Supreme Council for Personnel Selection, the passage of Law 1264-1982, which secured the right to strike and greatly improved the rights of workers, the Constitutional Amendment of 1985-1986, to which strengthened parliamentarism and reduced the powers of the indirectly elected president, the conduct of an assertive and independent Greek foreign policy, the expansion in the power of local governments, many progressive reforms in Greek law, 
and the granting of permission to the refugees from the Greek Civil War of Greek ethnicity to return home to Greece. During his tenure as Prime Minister of Greece from 1981 to 1989, the financial situation of Greece was worsened by scandal-infested governments, an average annual inflation of the order of 20%, and large budget deficits. The public debt of Greece as a function of gross domestic product almost tripled without leading to significant economic growth. Under Papandreou, the Greek economy remained relatively stagnant, with an average increase in GDP of 1% over 1981 to the 1989 period. The Panhellenic, the Panhellenic Socialist Movement, PASOK, which he founded and led, was the first non-communist political party in Greek history of the mass-based organization, introducing an unprecedented level in political and social participation in Greek society. In a poll conducted by Kath E. Mareni in 2007, 48% of those polled called Papandreou the quote, most important Greek prime minister, end quote. In the same poll, the first four years of Papandreou's government after Metapolitefsi were voted as the best government Greece ever had. Papandreou's father, Georgios Papandreou, and his son, George Papandreou, have both also served as prime ministers of Greece. Um, Radovan Karadzic, or Karadzic, is a Bosnian Serb politician born in 1945 who was convicted of genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes by the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. Karadzic was Karadzic was the president of Republika Srpska during the Bosnian War. Trained as a psychiatrist, he co-founded the Serb Democratic Party in Bosnia and Herzegovina and served as the first president of Republika Srpska from 1992 to 1996. Karadzic was a fugitive from 1996 until July 2008 after having been indicted for war crimes by the ICTY the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. The indictment concluded there was reasonable grounds for believing he committed war crimes, including genocide against Bosniak and Croat civilians during the Bosnian War, 1992-1995. While a fugitive, Karadzic worked at a private clinic in Belgrade specializing in alternative medicine and psychology under an alias. Karadzic was arrested in Belgrade in 2008 and brought before Belgrade's war crimes, tri war crimes court a few days later. Extradited to the Netherlands, he was placed in the custody of the International Court for the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. In the United Nations Detention Unit of Scheffeningen, where he was charged with 11 counts of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Karadzic, I mean, Karadzic, I keep saying his name wrong, is sometimes referred to by the Western media as the, quote, butcher of Bosnia, end quote. A sobriquet also applied to former army of Republika Srpska, VRS General Ratko Mladic. In 2016, Karadzic was found guilty of genocide in Srebrenica, war crimes and crimes against humanity, 10 of the 11 charges in total, and sentenced to 40 years imprisonment. In 2019, an appeal he had filed against his conviction was rejected and the sentence was increased to life imprisonment. In 2021, it was announced that he would be transferred to a British prison. Um, yeah, uh, Pablo had a lot of good friends. 
Gaddafi, Ayatollah Khomeini, all this good stuff. Some five years before his death, Pablo became a target of a slander campaign conducted by a former PASOC deputy who had meanwhile become a rightist. He published a book in which Pablo was presented as the conductor of a, quote, secret orchestra of November 17th, end quote, a great terrorist organization responsible for the assassination of politicians, judges, and military personnel. Some months before his death in autumn 1995, Pablo delivered a speech at the funeral of Ernest Mandel, once his colleague in the leadership of the Fourth International. Aged 84, Pablo died of cerebral apoplexy in Athens on February 17, 1996. Although having been a lifelong revolutionary, he was given a state funeral, perhaps because of his personal alliance and friendship with Papandreou and his flirtation with, quote, pan-Hellenic, end quote, thought during the last years of his life. Greek socialists and nationalists, spokesmen of Serb nationalism, but also Trotskyist veterans and ex-comrades from Greece and from the Fourth International were present at his funeral. We would like to conclude with this biographical sketch by some quotations, which may give an idea of what controversial a figure Pablo was. This first quote is from Al Richardson's, uh, obituary to Pablo. Quote, estimating Pablo's real political significance has always been difficult in English-speaking countries, where a whole mythology was erected around his name by those who had been happy to share his politics and then until they were directed against themselves. Although Pablo was supposed to be the arch-theorist of, quote, deep entry, end quote, as some of his critics, such as Jerry Healy, were a good deal more liquidationist in that direction as he was. And he constantly tried, without much success, to get Mando and others to publish a theoretical open journal, openly defending Trotskyist whilst undertaking such activity. Some of his positions, for example, over Algeria and the Sino-Soviet split, or Angola, were certainly no worse than those of his opponents. And he pointed to the importance of women's oppression under capitalism long before it became fashionable to do so. There was always a warmth of spirit about Pablo, and he certainly had a more attractive personality and wiser horizons than either Healy or Pierre Franck. End quote. Al Richardson. This next quote is from Emile Gallet. And it's an obituary to Michel Pablo from Workers Power, which I guess is a magazine. Quote, you ask, did Raptis Pablo advocate the liquidating bracket of, end quote, the International Secretariat of the Fourth International in favor of entry into Stalinist, social democratic, and anti-colonial national movements? Answer, no, absolutely not, not at any time. It was absolutely clear from the beginning, in continental Europe at least, that so-called, quote, entryism, end quote, was a specific tactic, that the Fourth International would retain its identity all the time, and that it would retain a public face through its own press. In real history, which is diametrically opposed to the lies of the sects and sects, one, it wasn't, however, actually possible to operationalize the entryist tactic any way to any great extent in various countries, for a sustained time, and the tactic was sooner or later abandoned. Two, the Trotskyists who argued for building independent Trotskyist parties did not gain any more influence. Oh shit, I'm, I skipped it. God damn it, that's... Motherfucker. Alright, I'll read the, finish reading this one and then reread the other quote. That quote is from Julian Bendien, reply to Ilyankova on Michel Pablo. Two, the Trotskyists who argued for building independent Trotskyist parties did not gain any more influence or members than the people who argued that an entryist tactic was preferable. Three, none of the various Trotskyist groups and tendencies in the 1950s was very sure about the way the world political situation and world capitalism would develop, and none of them could solve the problem of party organization in a way that resulted in viable political parties with mass support. 
This was admitted by Ernest Mandel, Duncan Hollis, Ted Grant, and all other Trotskyist leaders at that time. Four, the imminent threat of nuclear war referred to by Michel Raptiste, Pablo in the 1950s, was not a Trotskyist fantasy, but something which was for some years a real possibility that was recognized by a lot of people, many of them startled, me, many of them started, quote, ban the bomb, end quote, movements. Five, perspectives and theses mooted in internal bulletins of the Fourth International for the purpose of discussion were elevated by sects to final positions of world historical importance, which the sectarians gave to them, end quote. And again, that was from uh, Jurian, Jurian Bendien. Um, back to the quote that I m meant to read, which is by uh, Emile Gallet, or Gillet, Quote, the myth of, quote, Pablo White liquidationism, end quote, was born. The demonization of Pablo was largely the work of the American Socialist Workers' Party after its leaders decided to split the international in 1953, subsequently taken up by the French Lambertist and British Heliite sections of the, quote, International Committee, quote, anti-Pabloism came to be the hallmark of particular, a particularly sectarian and one-sided reading of history. Its purpose was to cover up the centrism that had affected the whole of the international, and in particular the support that Pablo had received for many years from all the leaders of the, quote, anti-Pabloite, end quote, groups. Despite four decades as a key figure in centrism, Pablo should also be remembered for the sterling and courageous work he carried out between 1943 and 1948, without his determination, the Fourth International would not have been reconstructed and important lessons would have been lost. We salute this invaluable, invaluable work, despite the major and decisive errors which he made in subsequent years, end quote. The next quote is from Tassos Anastasiadis. Memories of Mijas and from International Viewpoint, 1986. Quote, his intellectual and militant stature and his strong character made Pablo an imposing man, a man who never ceased struggling for the emancipation of all the oppressed and against all forms of injustice. He was a major figure in our international movement. Pablo made a decisive contribution above all in the dark years of the Nazi occupation of Europe and in the immediate post-war period, end quote. The next is from uh, John Lister, uh, Michel Pablo, a key figure in the Trotskyist split. Quote, in the hands of sectarians like Britain's Jerry Healy and France's Pierre Lambert, the term, quote, Pabloism, end quote, became little more than buzzword to justify the permanent split in the Fourth International. While they in turn implemented policies towards social democracy and bourgeois nationalism, which were equally, if not more, crass and opportunistic than Pablo himself. In practice, Pablo gave political expression to the opportunist pressures, which constantly bear down on the Trotskyist movement, pressures to downplay the program and the politics of the Fourth International in hopes of making a quick breakthrough into growing mass movements. It may have gone, but the hostile pressures have not, end quote. I want to look up Workers' Outlook real quick. I mean, Socialist Outlook. Is that... No, never mind. Oh, I'm important now. Um, the next quote is from Nikos Lukitis. Quote, In his everyday life, Pablo was polite and generous, as his ex-followers have told me, and he always defended those who were persecuted by the state, 
Throughout his long years of adventurism and opportunism, Pablo was never concerned with a search for privilege or wealth, but was motivated by the sincere belief that with these methods he was struggling against capitalist barbarism, end quote. The next quote is from Sakatos Vangelis. Uh, it's in German, I'm not reading that. And the last quote is in French, so I'm not reading that one either. Okay, well, that's the end of the bibliography, I mean, the biography, bi biographical sketch. I think I made this uh, video longer than it needed to be, but there were certain uh, things that I wanted to look up that I uh, it took a long time to read through. But hopefully it was worthwhile, and now you know who uh, more about, um, what's his name? Ben Bella and Boumedienne, I think is how his name. Fuck, I don't even remember how to pronounce the names. Um, Papandru and uh, other miscellaneous uh, people throughout this thing. And uh, hopefully it's worthwhile listening. Thank you.